Welcome back to Fix Dish, everybody. It's been a little bit since I posted, but we're going to go ahead and get back on a regular schedule. Uh, have the engine in, uh, mostly put together. Got a few things to finish up here. Uh, but in this video, I'll show you uh, just getting on the road. I did run into some complications. I did get figured out what went wrong and how we're going to go about fixing it. If you're not sure where we're at here in the series, click the link up in the corner and go ahead and get caught up. Hopefully this video helps somebody and maybe give you a tip uh, how to figure out what's wrong with yours if you recently got done with this project. Do the uh, transmission fill. Let's see here. So when doing this job, uh, you have to take the, the transfer case off as you saw earlier in the video. Um, you know, check it up. Check it out up in the uh, my previous videos. You'll see where uh, I had to disconnect the transfer case. It actually drained out, drained out some of my transmission fluid. On the two-wheel drive ones, you don't have to do that, but on the four-wheel drive, you do. So anyways, now I'm going to have to fill my transmission up. And that is... Uh, first, you want to drain it, which I did already. Right there. So that's drained. I'm going to put the lid back in there. Or the cap lid. Cap back in there. Right at this breather, that's actually where we will fill it. So we'll get that pulled off. And we're going to fill this up. And here we are using the Mercon LV with my funnel extension. I know it's redneck as hell. Uh, the fluid when it comes out, don't be too concerned. LV does this. It just looks blacker than hell. 114,000 miles on it. It's going to be fine. I'm going to take a slight tour. Got all my shock stuff set back up. Brakes back on. Sensors back on. Transmission plugged in. Got my uh, cross bracing set back up. I still have all the bracing to do underneath here yet. And then the exhaust, obviously. I didn't get the bolts in the kit. I don't know why I wouldn't. Uh, whatever. Anyways, so I got all this set back up. Um, now I need to make sure that uh, got no codes. Let's give it a whirl here. So right here, the audio just blows out with the microphone on my uh, camera, so you can barely hear me talking. But basically, I fired it up for the first time. No codes other than a door code and a hood code. The hood's not on and the door's open. But besides that, I have no other codes. Um, I hadn't hooked up the exhaust, so this thing's like ridiculously dumb loud on this camera. I don't have any type of like a filter or a muff on it to kind of reduce it from blowing out the audio. But anyways, um, from here, I'll finish getting the rest of the suspension and everything set up. And then we'll take it on a test drive. Well, if you can't tell, She's on the ground. So I'm going to take her out for a test drive, make sure I don't have any issues. Okay, we're going to start her up here. Just to show you kind of what it sounds like through this camera, it really sucks. It just blows out the auto ridiculous. So as you can see, the audio is not very good at my in-car drive. But anyways, I'm driving around town. Trying to make sure it doesn't overheat, everything works and operates the way it should, no codes. Uh, so far it seems like it's got good performance, so I'm going to go ahead and hook up the exhaust and let's go ahead and put this sucker back into service. Well, if you can't guess, we're back in the garage, and if I had the leak down tester out, you know it's definitely not good. So it runs great, uh, except at idle you hear a little misfire without the intake, and uh, under heavy acceleration, you have misfire one and four. So, first thing I found was I reattached uh, this piece right here, and I didn't do a great job of it and it blew off. Anyways, got that glued back on there, it's on there good now. 
Um, but then uh, I did compression tests. Uh, they're equal across the board, no issue there. Uh, now I'm doing leak down. Um, I can't necessarily figure out why I'm missing on one and four. I don't have any engine issues as far as I'm aware. I'm afraid that cam phasing slipped or is cam phasing's not working, one of the two, not sure. But uh, anyways, I have the plugs out. Now these are the plugs that I put in prior to starting this project, so they're new, but they're not brand new after the rebuild. So I went ahead and got a fresh set of plugs. Um, I'm gonna put those in and see if my problem goes away. But if it doesn't, I'm gonna have to continue with leak down and see if I'm leaking out my valves because uh, that's what I'm afraid is actually what's happening is I'm leaking through my valves. So let's go ahead and get this part done and we'll see what happens. All right, got a fresh set of plugs in here. And we'll see if she continues to misfire. Oh. Forgot to unplug all the injectors and everything back in. Don't forget to do that. There we go. Yeah, I think I see it misfiring right now. Yep. Well, sad day for me. So I've put about 300 miles on it since I've gotten this done. Developed a weird misfire and a little uh, uh, sound through the intake, uh, like a like a thunk noise, pretty indicative of uh, valve events, valve timing. Um, what I believe happened is my cam phaser slipped at a time. It's a guess. Uh, I'm gonna have to verify that here by. Uh, pulling the top end off, put all my timing tools back into place, and verify that I'm still in time, which I'm pretty sure the answer is gonna be no. Anyways, needless to say, a little frustrating. This is part of what happens sometimes. And I mean, if you guys ever wonder where warranty work comes from and why it sucks so bad, this is why everything appeared as if it was fine. Probably I messed up, but I don't know, time will tell. We'll uh, get this top end stripped off get my timing tools put back on there and uh, see where I end up. Okay, got her confirmed. My cam phaser slipped. And I don't know if it's because I had the wrong torque rating or what. But right now I have the uh, crank stop put in. And the tool fits on only on one side. Now, just uh, in case you haven't seen my other videos, when I timed this thing, I did get all the timing tools put on. So the cam bridge, the uh, cam phaser lock, the crank stop, the starter bridge, I got all that stuff put in. Even the little uh, deal for the uh, timing of the crank sensor, all that was put in and uh, torqued everything and then ran this engine over a few times, put all the timing tools back in, and everything lined back up perfectly. Um, I'm wondering if either I did something wrong here as far as the uh, the torque sequence, or something slipped, um, but after I did all the uh, timing procedures, I did roll the engine over and made sure this fit, but I did get 300 miles out of it uh, before it messed up, so yeah. Uh, cam phaser slipped. Hopefully I didn't damage anything. The engine runs like a top, so. So you're probably curious how I came to the conclusion that just the phaser slipped. And you kind of rule that this is what the issue is uh, by process of elimination. Basically, I ran the engine back over to top dead center and then checked leak down. These are my leak down numbers. And uh, I noticed that I was leaking out of the intake and then I manually rolled the engine over by hand and then the valves actually sealed up and I had no leak down. That's how you know that your valve events are off. So that kind of confirmed it for me. If you're wanting some additional information or maybe more detailed look at how I came to this conclusion, uh, just put it down in the comments and I can 
give a demonstration and a like a troubleshooting video. Uh, but anyways, so I need to uh, get some new cam phaser bolts and a vacuum pump gasket, and then uh, re-glue everything back down once I get it all put back together. But this uh, project will be done here as soon as I get uh, the gasket and bolts, and we'll get it retimed and back on the road. Uh, sorry about the delay between content. Um, I'll be posting more regularly now, so you can look forward to some new videos coming up in the future.